Well, certainly it's a very impressive performance and no doubt, as I mentioned, you beat many analysts' expectations. Well, if we can touch on the issue of your operating expenses and how you are able to manage that. So, that, as you mentioned, you only increased moderately about 10%. So what would you say you did specifically to be able to manage the cost, given the fact that we know 2020 was a very high inflationary year? We saw inflation continue to rise month on month. Well, there are so many things. You can dimension them in two parts. One, the core element is the interest expense, which, like I mentioned earlier, that we were able to effectively manage and we achieve 18% reduction. Then when you come to the critical cost line too, there are other expenses that, in a way, they are beyond your control. Regulatory costs, for instance. Our regulatory costs account for the, here. I'm talking about our NDIC premium and AMCON charge. They are, that's significant. It accounts for about almost 28% of the overhead. It's massive. And given our size, because these charges are related to your size, so the bigger you are, the higher the burden. So that is also the But We've also seen the adoption of the uh, digital working environment, helping us to reduce certain costs, stationary costs, and also improving the turnaround time which we transactions are being done, thereby promoting efficiency. So, but the biggest savings for us actually came from the interest uh, expense. We were able to rain down on interest costs and effectively achieving um, a year-on-year -year improvement of 18%. Coming back to the topic of non-interest income, which also buoyed your revenues, as you mentioned. The big question is how sustainable are these gains? Because we know that a big part of that was FX revaluation um, gains. Um, there are other elements there as well, especially relating to your digital strategy. But the big question is whether or not moving forward, are these one-off gains or do you think they, there can be a trajectory of sustainable growth here? Well, I think um, if you look at it first, let's bear in mind that we achieved this in a pandemic year which was, in my, in my assessment, quite remarkable. Um, the thing about the market is that the market doesn't tell you what to expect. It's about how you read the market. It's about how you can discern and find where to extract value. So in a way, we never imagined COVID was coming with its monumental impact and the lockdown on business. So, and we have a team, the system is such that we have built very strong and dynamic competencies and capability that even if you see an opportunity closing, everybody is up there thinking of where next, where do we need to go to. So I don't want to see that as a one-off. One, it has to take very profound and outstanding treasury talent to achieve that, which we have. I will say without sounding immodest that I think we have the best treasury team in, in, in this market. So the team will continue to do the same job they are doing and taking advantage into the market. There will always be opportunity. It depends on what you are looking for. So in a way, it's a challenge for us to sustain it. And remember who we are. We come from the background of a leading organization. We are not going to lead today and not lead tomorrow. So that challenge is there. So we have to be creative. We have to be dynamic to find new treasure points uh, to sustain our performance.